Now, after a very busy month, I'm ready for some easy weeknight meals. How about you guys? Now we're finally getting around to cleaning up our Christmas tree, but I want to show you something. So right before Christmas, I had COVID and my husband decided to take the girls to chop down their very first Christmas tree. This was a great idea until we started cleaning up the tree and I noticed something. Now, if you zoom in on this, you'll be able to see there are probably, I don't know, hundreds, hundreds of little beetles that we believe hatched and then stuck to the tree. Ugh. Not gonna lie, grateful to be done with that nasty tree. And also, last video I told you that I was due January 7th. <laughs> that is not true, it is February 7th. We're just gonna blame that one on the pregnancy because sometimes my brain is not functioning. Now, with it being January, I thought I'd start off the month right with some simple, easy weeknight recipes. These ones are my favorites. Okay, I'm gonna start with the King's Hawaiian Rolls. The only bad thing about the air fryer is that they all won't fit, so I actually am pulling three aside. So we're just gonna cook the nine right now. So if you have a smaller family, this will work perfect. So I actually, I cut these in half. We'll just open them right up. Then we're gonna make the yummy sauce that goes inside. You do anywhere from a fourth a cup to a half a cup of mayonnaise and then and about a fourth a cup to a half a cup of honey mustard. So you just wanna make sure that these are kind of like the same amount, but yeah, I'm gonna do about a fourth a cup and then mix them all together. Then I am just going to scoop on the sauce and just spread it around the best that I can. Once you have both sides you wanna have covered in the sauce, then it's time to add your turkey. So I love using the deli meat. I just think it tastes a lot better. So you just need one side, make sure that you have all the bread covered. So now we're gonna add the Swiss cheese. I love just getting this pre-cut Swiss cheese. It just makes my life a lot easier. So we're just gonna make sure that all the pieces have some Swiss cheese on them. So we're gonna gently put this on, there we go, and put it right into the air fryer. Okay, so now we need the topping. So this is one fourth cup of butter that we've melted. And then we're gonna add one teaspoon of, we're gonna call it the W sauce, just because I struggle saying it. W sauce, you know what I'm talking about? Yep, W sauce. Then we're gonna do one tablespoon of poppy seeds. That seems like a lot, but trust me, it makes it taste so good. Okay, then go ahead and mix this all together. This is going to be your yummy, like topping on top of it. It's gonna make it taste so good. Now it's just time to cover the tops with the poppy seed butter amazingness. Okay, now we're gonna cook it at 350 degrees. We're gonna go for five minutes and then check on it just so it's not burning. I checked these at three minutes and they are starting to get crispy on the top, but the cheese is all melted. So we're gonna call this a win and cook them. Just so you know, I only cooked them for three minutes. The next one is the sliders. You ready? Okay, okay I'm gonna let you take a bite first then I'll take a bite after you. Mm -hmm. And she's the kid who likes sauces and mayonnaise and stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm curious of your thoughts. I like the crunch at the top. Okay. So. And other than that, it pretty much just tastes like a normal slider. Right, we have sliders a lot at our house, but <laughs> mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. Okay, one out of five. Uh, five. Five? I'll go to five too, I love sliders. <laughs> All right guys, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> the next recipe I'm making is one pan chicken fajitas. Now I love this because I can cook my chicken and my vegetables all at the same time. Then you just fill them in a tortilla, super simple. The first thing we're gonna do is to lay the chicken tenders onto the sheet pan. Next, we're gonna add either taco seasoning or fajita seasoning, whatever you have. We're gonna add about half of the packet on top of the chicken. Next, I'm gonna take a jar of salsa. I love Herdez salsa. And we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of salsa on top of the chicken also. Okay, so I cut up a yellow pepper and a red pepper, and then I also cut up an onion. Now you can do your onion in strips, but my kids don't really love onions, so I'm trying to hide them, so I did small pieces for my onions. Then we're just gonna pour this right on top of your chicken. You can do it in between, you can do it on top, it doesn't really matter. Now for the onions. Now I'm just gonna add the rest of the taco seasoning right on top, and then we're gonna drizzle everything with a little bit of olive oil. Okay, this is all ready to cook, so we're gonna cook it at 375 degrees for about 40 minutes. 
All right, when you're all done, you're just gonna take it and put it in a tortilla and add your most favorite toppings. So if you notice I'm using whole wheat tortillas just to make it a little bit healthier. So if you're going healthier, whole wheat's the way to go. All right, ready? So good. Instant Pot Sloppy Joes. You're gonna love this one. You're first gonna start by pushing the saute button. Once it's warm, you're gonna add one tablespoon of butter. You're just gonna let it melt in there. Next, you're gonna add just one pound of ground beef. You can also use ground turkey if you want to. We're using ground beef today. And just start separating your meat. On top of that, you're gonna add one red pepper, about a half of a red onion, and just go ahead and mix that all together. Now, you're not gonna cook this all the way through, but just a little bit until your meat is brown. Now, even though it's not cooked through, you can drain your grease right now. Okay, you're gonna push off and then we're going to add the sauce. Now down below in the description, this is a homemade sauce. You can find that recipe there. Then we're going to mix this all together. There's enough liquid in there that it should be able to pressurize. So we're gonna put your lid on. You're gonna turn that little knob to sealing. You're gonna push pressure cook, and then we're just gonna cook this. So finish cooking the meat at eight minutes. When it's done, go ahead and let the pressure out and your beef should be done and it should be well combined. Those vegetables will be nice and cooked all together. I love serving this on buns. You can add it with, of course, chips or a side salad. Pork chops and potatoes are cooked at the same time. You're first gonna add three fourths cup of Italian seasoning into a bowl, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and then a half cup of Parmesan. And then just mix that all together. All right, so I'm gonna line my cookie sheet with foil. Then you're just gonna spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. All right, so first you're gonna take one of your pork chops. Now mine has a bone in it, it doesn't matter. So bone in or without a bone, that's great. So you're gonna put it into a half a cup of your melted butter and then into your Italian seasoning mixture. And you're gonna press it pretty good, then flip it, then press it again. Then it's just gonna go right onto your pan. All right, once they're all done, let's head on over to the potatoes. All right, now it's time for the potatoes. So I have about five potatoes that I chopped up. Again, I like to do bite-sized pieces just because they're easier to eat. We'll just dump them right into a bowl. Then I'm just gonna drizzle the top with a little bit of olive oil and then some salt and some pepper. Then you're just gonna mix this to coat all of the potatoes. So then you're just gonna dump the potatoes all around the pork chops. We want them to be touching the foil because they'll cook a little bit better. Then you just wanna spread them out, making sure they're not on top of each other. Then you're just gonna cook these for 400 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes. All right, when it's all done cooking, you're gonna go ahead and plate up your pork chops and your potatoes. Now, I also like to serve this with a delicious side salad. So you're gonna take about a pound of your favorite sausage cook it up into a skillet, cook it until it is no longer pink and cooked all the way through. Now while that's cooking, take a nine by nine pan and spray it with cooking spray. Now I have about four biscuits, canned biscuits that I have here. I've cut them into pieces, four pieces, and just laid them onto the bottom. I'm gonna cook those at 400 degrees for 10 minutes or until they're brown. Now while, when this is done cooking, I'm gonna add about two and a half tablespoons of flour, and we're just gonna mix that in. This is how we're going to make the gravy of our biscuits and gravy casserole. Then we're gonna add two and a half cups of milk, and a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. You're kinda just going to mix that all in together until it starts to thicken, and it will thicken, trust me. Once it's done thickening, you're gonna pour it on top of the biscuits. Then you wanna make sure that you've spread it around really well so all of the gravy and the sausage is in between the biscuits because you don't want hard biscuits, you want them, you know, covered in the gravy, right? Am I right? Yes, I am. Then you're gonna add the rest of the biscuits. So there's four more biscuits. You're gonna cut them into fourths and then you're just going to place them on top of your gravy, your sausage gravy. There we go, I can speak today. Once you're done with that, it's time to go into the oven. So you're gonna cook them for about 10 to 15 more minutes or until the biscuits are just nice and golden brown on top. Now, I love cooking meatballs in the Instant Pot. It's one of my most favorite things because frozen meatballs cook so fast and you can have a recipe literally on your table in about 15 minutes. So, if you guys are ready, let's get cooking. 
All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is kind of saute the vegetables to get them just a little bit softer and full of flavor. So we're going to go over to our Instant Pot. Now this is the Lux, it's an older version, but it, all the Instant Pots should have a saute button. So you're gonna just push the saute and then wait for it to get hot. So once your Instant Pot's hot, we're gonna add just two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of olive oil. Then we're just gonna mix this around, melt our butter, get the bottom hot and toasty so we can cook the vegetables. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna put in there is just one onion, all chopped up small. I like little onions. Then we're just gonna add about four to six stalks of celery, depending on if, how much you like. Then I'm gonna add four large carrots that we cut into little pieces, or if you're lazy, you can always just throw in some baby carrots, but I like, I like how these taste. Okay, once our vegetables are in, we're kinda just gonna stir it around with the oil and the butter just to brown them up a little bit. So this will take about two to three minutes just until your onions start to get soft, your celery starts to get soft, but don't worry, your carrots will cook as your Instant Pot cooks. Okay, as your vegetables are cooking, we're just gonna add four teaspoons of garlic in there. Make that smell really good with the onions. Okay, so it's been a few minutes, now I'm going to add all my other stuff. So first I'm gonna just add two cans of crushed tomatoes. Now you wanna leave the juice in there because this is a soup, so you want it to be soupy. There we go. Mix that around a little bit. You can still have your saute on. It, will, it won't hurt anything. Now we have three tablespoons of tomato paste that we're gonna throw in there. Now I am just going to eyeball it because, you know, that's how I roll. All right, then we're gonna just add one packet of ranch. Now my secret, this is Kroger Ranch. Now you can buy name brand ranch, but you'll pay almost a dollar more. I love buying store brand because it's literally the same ingredients and it tastes just as good. So save a dollar here and there when you buy store brand. Okay, we're gonna mix this in for a little bit. Mmm, it's starting to smell really good. Okay, now we're gonna add the beef broth. Okay, so we have, because it's a soup, we're gonna add four cups of beef broth, which is this whole entire container. I love buying these containers because I don't have to measure, I can just pour it all in. There we go. Okay, mix that around a little bit. Now we're getting pretty full on our Instant Pot. So this is a six quart. If you're gonna make a three, if you're gonna make this recipe with a three quart, you want to half the recipe or it's gonna overflow. So I, you can make this recipe just fine in a six quart or eight quart. All right, now the most important part is the meatballs. I just have a 32 ounce bag of frozen meatballs. This is one of my favorite brands. It's Cook Perfect. This is kind of, these are the meatballs that I buy all the time, so gonna dump those carefully in without splashing too much. There we go. Okay, mix those around a little bit. Now there's enough liquid in here, it's not gonna burn, and it's gonna, it's gonna be just perfect. So we're gonna put the lid on right now. Make sure that this little knob is turned to sealing, not venting. Now, because we have the saute button on, we need to turn that off. So we have to push cancel. So we'll push cancel and then we'll push either, this is the old version, so it's a manual button or pressure cook button, depending on what you have. Now I love this because meatballs only take seven minutes to cook. So once you set the timer, you can just walk away. Okay, so when the timer is done, you're just gonna turn the little knob to venting to let out all the pressure and steam so the lid can open. So once the lid is up, oh, it smells so good. Nice, okay, we're gonna just dish it up and you guys will see just how yummy it is. Now my kids like this because they love the meatballs in it. I swear that's their favorite food. I like it because there's vegetables and other good things in it. Okay, so we're just gonna add some toppings onto it. So we like to add cheese because my kids will eat anything with cheese, right? 
and then just a little bit of green onions on top. Just to give it a pop of color and a little bit of flavor. All right, guys, there you go. Super easy meatball soup. Buffalo chicken tostadas. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really get much easier than this, and it's also super healthy. Well, for the most part. It's healthier, healthier yeah. than going out to eat. It's so. true, it's very true. Better than a Big Mac. <laughs> but, okay, so we'll get started. So the first thing you're going to wanna do is add your plain Greek yogurt. So we have about a cup and a half of plain Greek yogurt right here. You can use like a sour cream mayonnaise combination, but this is from our new healthy cookbook, so we're going for healthier alternatives healthier. here. Healthier, okay, what's next? I can so help you. So we're going to add about a half cup of some buffalo sauce, and we'll just mix this together. Nice. And this, we always mix this separately before we add in the chicken just to help oh, combine yeah. it just a little bit to, better. To maybe smooth out yeah. the... Greek yogurt, yes. there we go, what's the word, Greek yogurt. So once we have this mix, we'll just mm. add in our chicken. You okay. could do, you could boil your chicken breasts or do them in the Instant Pot and shred them. I love rotisserie chicken because yes. I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> All the cooking is done for you, you exactly. just gotta shred it. Okay, you wanna add that in yep, here? Yep, you ready for me? Yes. You want all of it in there? Um, yeah, most of it. Okay, I can do that. That's probably good. Perfect. Okay, so again, just like five to six cups of shredded chicken. Nice. We'll mix this all together. Now also, like if your kids don't love the hot sauce, you yes. can also add some barbecue sauce in yes, too. It would still it would be like a creamy barbecue sauce, but yes. I love hot sauce. Yeah. I love things and a little the, spicy. It gets tamed with the plain Greek yogurt, so it's not as spicy. So nice, I, nice. I have the most weak mouth <laughs> and I cannot do spicy, and I love these. So. Perfect, perfect. And then once you add the cheese and all the other toppings, Good. any weak mouth like mine will handle it Golden. just fine. Golden, all okay, right. Okay, so now do you just want to put about a half cup on each tostada. So yes. this recipe, it kind of serves a lot. It serves about five to six. It makes about 10 to 12 tostadas. We're just gonna do one pan of six today, but we usually serve two per person when we serve yeah, this. Yeah, I, I eat two. I yeah. would easily eat two. And then, once you have all your chicken on top, this is a fun way to get your kids involved, kind of get them familiar with cooking more healthy. There we go. They can top these off with their favorite toppings. So it's kind of like a pizza. So we'll top these with some mozzarella cheese. You can use really any cheese that you have on hand, but we definitely prefer our mozzarella. We I love some mozzarella. mozzarella. Her fresh mozzarella, that would be really good. Yes, it too. would. And then to these, we've just chopped up some green onions and some cilantro. Mm. So this is also, if your kids that. are kind of weird with both of these toppings, you can put them on before the cheese, so then it's kind of <laughs> hidden. <laughs> and they or won't just, it, but. Just omit them and they yeah. will still eat it, that I'm too. sure. And that has great flavor to it. Right, I love green onions and the hot sauce. That's one of my favorite <laughs> things. All and right. the best part about this recipe is it takes three minutes to cook these. You're just going to broil them on high Aww. for three minutes, and then bada bing, bada boom, Perfect. they're served. Kind of out of control with the cilantro. That's okay. Yeah. Everyone loves some good cilantro. Me too. Okay. All right, should we stick them in? Yes. Perfect. So that's literally all you have to do for this recipe. It, yes. What, how many minutes that took us to throw together? Like, maybe five. Maybe, maybe five. <laughs> and it's super delicious. Now if you are going even healthier, you can easily serve this on a salad yes. or something like that. But for now, our kids love this and it's mm -hmm. good. All right. It is so good. Let's move on to the next recipe. All right, so on your Instant Pot, you're gonna push the saute button. There we go. Once it starts heating up, you're gonna add one pound of ground beef into it. So just gonna dump that in. Whoop, not that part. All right, and then I'm also gonna add one onion that we've chopped up into pretty small pieces. Just gonna throw that in with it. Next, I'm gonna take my lovely chopster. Now, I've talked about my chopster quite often, so if you haven't seen this yet, I'll put a link down below in the description. It is my most favorite, probably one of my most favorite tools in the whole kitchen. So it just breaks up your meat so easily as you cook.
All right, so once your meat is cooked pretty well, like it's almost all brown and your onions are getting a little bit tender, now it's time to add everything else in. So, okay, so first we're gonna add just one green pepper in there. Then we're gonna start adding in some of the sauces. So first we're gonna do like, this is 29 ounces of tomato sauce. Now this seems like a lot of sauce, but just trust me on this one, it's, it's gonna be good. So we have 29 ounces of that. Then we have two cans of diced tomatoes. We're gonna leave all the liquid in these two. Then we have one can of corn. Again, we're just gonna leave the liquid in because we're gonna cook our noodles in this at the same time. Okay, then for some of our seasonings and sauces, we have half a cup of brown sugar. Now this is the secret. This is what makes it grandma's goulash is the brown sugar in it. So we're gonna add three tablespoons of soy sauce and then one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Then we're just gonna mix it really well. Now we're getting pretty full. So if you have an eight quart instant pot, I would highly suggest cooking it in the eight quart, but we're gonna, we're gonna see how this goes. Next we have one pound of elbow macaroni. Now I'm only gonna do half the box because I'm nervous that it's too full. So if you, you could do the whole box if you had an eight quart, but half the box, so just a half a pound, if you're gonna do just a six quart. So we're gonna dump in our macaroni. There we go. And then we're gonna add about a cup of water. So we need that water in there so that so one, it will pressurize, and two, we'll get our noodles all cooked. All right, I think we're ready. Okay, so you're gonna make sure the lid is on all the way. Make sure this little knob is turned to sealing, not venting. Then you're gonna push the pressure cook button. Because we have to cook those noodles, we need to go to four minutes. So we're gonna go, here we go. <laughs> we're at 50, so we gotta go down quite a ways. And because our hamburger is already cooked, you really just have to cook it for the amount of time that the noodles cook. So four minutes, once you set the timer, you can just walk away. All right, so now that the timer is done, it's been sitting here for about seven minutes or so, we're gonna turn this little knob to venting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, now that all the pressure's out, you can open the lid safely. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this, but yes, I am excited. I think my husband will be excited for this one. All right, so we're just gonna pour some into this bowl here so you can see it. Now, if you wanna add a little bit of salt and pepper, that's great. I didn't add a ton of seasoning, but it really doesn't need a lot because it has a lot of flavor in there. And then if you wanna put a little bit of cheese on top, serve it just like that with your kids and they will love it. Now my noodle of choice today is small shell noodles. So you just need one pound of noodles. Then you're gonna put them in the bottom of your Instant Pot. You're gonna take your pot and fill it just until the noodles are covered with water. Next, go ahead and put your lid on. Make sure it's sealed correctly. Now if you have a knob, you wanna turn it to sealing, not venting. Next, you'll push manual or pressure cook button and go to four minutes. Now after a few seconds, it will stay on. That means you're good, you can walk away. Now after the four minutes, you can turn the knob to release it, but just beware with pasta, sometimes it makes a giant mess. So you can turn it back and forth, releasing the pressure slowly. Once all the pressure's out, go ahead and lift the lid up and your pasta should be done. Now I didn't need to drain any water because there was no water left to drain. So go ahead and mix up your noodles before you add the other ingredients. So first I'm gonna add about eight tablespoons of butter. I like to use salted butter. That's my favorite in macaroni and cheese. Next, you're gonna add about a half a cup of milk. Now we're gonna add a little bit more, but right now we're just gonna add half a cup. Then we're gonna add two cups of sharp cheddar white cheese. Did you hear that? Sharp cheddar cheese, it is amazing. And then about a half a cup to a cup of shredded Parmesan. So now it's time to just mix everything in. So slowly, gently mix it in. Now it'd be easier to push the saute button just to get it warm or warmer on the bottom to melt your butter faster and to melt your cheese faster. 
Now because it is really cheesy, you want to make sure to add just a little bit more liquid just so you can make it creamy, not so chunky cheesy. So I added a half a cup more of milk. Then you're just going to continue mixing until all of your butter is melted and all of your cheese is mixed together. Now you can add just a little bit of salt and pepper. I just like to add salt in my mac and cheese and then go ahead and mix that in as well. Now when you're all done, your cheese should be nice and creamy. This is how we like it. Now when I serve it, I also like to add just a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. And there you have it. So this recipe is perfect if you have leftover chicken. I sometimes buy this chicken that you can get and steam it and shred and it's my favorite. I just buy it. You can get it at Walmart or Kroger. Then we just need some onion and chive cream cheese, a little bit of mozzarella. Now it calls for real bacon that's crumbled, but we're gonna call this my real bacon because it's a simple step and I love how it's already cooked. And then just one thing of crescents. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is microwave our cream cheese and I'm literally just gonna take off the foil and microwave it in this package. All right, now we're ready to mix everything together. So we're gonna take our chicken, I'm gonna give it to you, and just go ahead and dump it in. Good job, Maylee, perfect. Then we have our cream cheese. I microwaved it for about 30 seconds, just so it's a little bit softer. It will make it a lot easier to stir, huh? While she's mixing all that, I'm gonna add about a half cup or so of bacon bits. You can add more if you want. The last thing we're gonna add is about a half a cup of mozzarella cheese, and I'm just gonna eyeball this, because. Sometimes it's okay to do a little more than half a cup because everyone loves cheese. All right, now that we're all mixed together, it's time to put together the pockets. <laughs> now we're just gonna open up our crescents. Scariest part. Oh, it didn't come. And now we gotta crunch it. All right, so now we're gonna take this little dude, we're gonna roll it out. Now it is in triangles right now, but we don't want triangles. We're gonna make little squares. So we're actually going to cut it ourselves kind of fix those little lines, so we're gonna smush them together. So we need to make 16 squares out of here. So I cut it in fourths, and then we're just gonna cut those in fourths too, so. Okay, so you're gonna take one square, you're gonna spread it out just a little bit, because we need it bigger than this little tiny square. So we're gonna stretch it, and then maybe, do you wanna put about two tablespoons or so right in the middle, okay? Good work. <laughs> then we're just going to close it up. I just like to pinch all four pull up all four corners, and then just pinch it at the top. <laughs> Looks good. Okay, so we finished up these little guys. Mm -hmm. Now, if I would do it again, I'd actually probably leave them in triangles. It would make <laughs> our lives a little bit easier, huh? We also had about, we only used about half of this, so thankfully, I have some more crescents, so we're going to make a little bit more. So <laughs> with this recipe, make sure you get two of these. All right, now it's time to bake these. We're gonna bake them at about 375 degrees for? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. All right, they went about 10 minutes. They look amazing. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me. If you want more easy recipes, you can find more just right up there. All right, I'll see you guys next time.